Once again, we are not going to discuss the abortion debate, but focus on the broad reaching consequences Texas's law could have on your ability to buy a gun, eat in a restaurant, or visit a nail salon anywhere in the country. We're going to explain the connection in a minute. In a statement, the president said, I'm launching a whole of government effort to respond to this decision, specifically to looking to HHS and DOJ to see what steps the federal government can take to insulate those in Texas from this law and ensure access to safe and legal abortions as protected by Roe, referring to Roe v. Wade. First, we need to explain how this law is different than any abortion legislation since Roe. It all goes down to how the law is written because it goes around the traditional mechanism that abortion rights advocates use to challenge state laws. Here it is. Rather than restricting abortion from the state, it hands that power to private citizens, allowing them, private citizens, any private citizen, to sue any abortion clinic, provider, or insurance carrier that participates in an abortion after six weeks with a minimum civil damage of $10,000. The Washington Report, Post reports this effectively stops 85% of abortions in Texas. We have this covered from three angles. Former Obama White House official Johanna Mosca on how this affects democratic politics. Bob Cusack, editor-in-chief of The Hill on how the White House will use the federal government. And Josh Blackman, law professor from the University of South Texas on how this law could be weaponized by blue states to example, uh, banned gun sales. Appreciate you all being here. Johanna, we start with you. Uh, all right, so does the Biden administration just get to investigate any red state whose law it doesn't like? No, I don't think you're going to see that. I think what you're going to see is, look, this is personal. This is people's well, most important But that is what we're, that is what we're seeing right here. They don't, they don't like the law, and Joe Biden basically saying, I'm going to use the power of the federal government to get around it. Is he not? It's, it's more than not liking the law, Leland. The way that this law is written basically sets up a witch hunt. So if I'm, you know, gossipy Gail down the street, and I've decided that somebody has maybe talked to somebody about an abortion, I can sue them. I can fill our court with unnecessary lawsuits and it's just you know it's it's not only stupid but it's also not what governance is about you know in Texas we have energy crisis we have um, national natural disasters that we need to get ready for but instead what we're doing is we're talking about abortion and this is just a, a red meat issue to some of these politicians but look I is found it, out when I was 21 years old that I had a parent my parents had given up a child for adoption and that is a very personal decision when they had a teenage pregnancy that is not something the government should be involved in that is something Something that should, they should discuss with their parents, with their faith Johanna, leaders, Johanna, and, we said, and we said certainly we not in a lawsuit. Yeah. Well, Johnna, we said we said we weren't going to get into the abortion debate, which is where this is headed. And try to stay uh, on the it law, is, Bob. It, it brings up so much, though, of of the corporate activism side now of politics, especially about real personal politics and these cultural issues. Match.com, the dating site, and you can imagine that they're not going to be the last ones, have said that they are going to pay. Uh, for Texas employees who seek out-of-state abortions. Uh, and there's obviously this thought that companies across Texas, especially those in Austin, the tech center sector, are really going to get upset about this. Here's how Greg Abbott responded. Take a listen. Regardless of some hand-wringing by some publications, the people who are not wringing their hands are the people who create jobs that run businesses, uh, that care about their daily lives. Uh, and people are choosing Texas over any other state and part of that is because of our low regulations, our no income tax. In fact, we constitutionally banned an income tax in the state of Texas. So is the Texas abortion law the next Georgia voting law, Bob, of corporate virtue signaling? Uh, I, I don't think so. I don't think to that degree. I think, you know, corporate America uh, wants to be very much involved and has been involved in uh, voting rights. And, and certainly you remember the All-Star game, Major League Baseball moved it from, from Atlanta because of that reason. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case. You know, as far as uh, Biden in the White House, I mean, they really don't have many options here because the Supreme Court has spoken. And then it comes down to, well, maybe Congress could pass a new law because uh, Nancy Pelosi's indicated she's going to move forward on legislation. But that's 
that's not going to pass unless uh, you, you pack the courts like the left wants and, and add more justices uh, to the Supreme Court. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen either because the votes are not there to do it. So uh, that's why the Supreme Court is so important. And remember, uh, a lot of people on the left are, are reminding uh, everybody that Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg uh, could have retired earlier. And, and that's, a, that's a key uh, key vote, and, and now John Roberts is no longer the swing vote that he used to be because the conservative majority is 6-3 with Roberts sometimes uh, siding with the left. And he did in this case, 5-4. Uh, Josh, you're the yes, expert on the, on the Supreme Court here. Uh, is, is Bob right that the Supreme Court has spoken or have they just declined to decide right now? I think they're taking it with caution. The five justices in the majority simply said, this case is not ready for us to review come back later. So I don't think the court has spoken quite yet, but this term the court will consider whether to overrule Roe v. Wade in its entirety. So this is a huge year for abortion cases at the court. Uh, Johanna, obviously we understand the emotion that, that this you have about this topic, and we appreciate you bringing it. As we, as we sort of discuss this from a political standpoint and, and how the federal government is, is trying to sort of attack this law and overturn it because they don't like it, let's ask this. How We've seen the White House now step up about this in a pretty unusual way. Nancy Pelosi saying she's going to start uh, talking about this. Is this what Democrats need to capture the kind of emotion that you've showed on this and turn things around for the Biden administration after a rough month? You know, Leland, with all due respect, to, to brush it off, to brush childbirth, the most important thing that you ever do in your life, off as an emotional thing, or maybe some of us have emotions about it, is the kind of dismissive thing that I think we're actually above. This is crucial to a lot of people. You know, they don't want the government involved in this. And if you look at the stats, the stats are actually on the Democrat side on this. They're not trying to brush anything aside. They didn't want this law. Texas passed this law. Texas forced our hands. Texas has now put in place a law that basically bans Roe v. Wade. It has overturned abortion. And people who are young, who want to have abortion rights preserved, are going to need to get to the polls. And so, you know, the whole voting rights uh, debate, which we should definitely talk about, um, you know, they'll put in place a lot of barriers. But this is something that people care about. And so, you know, as much as Texas wanted to throw out red meat to the Republican side, I'm afraid they've got a lot of people who are going to be pretty upset about this. Josh, you not only study law, but you study politics in Texas. Uh, is there a backlash among Texas Democrats that this has galvanized in the way Johanna talks, speaks? Uh, there very well may be a backlash. I mean, the election's about a year away for the midterms and then the state legislature as well. Uh, but I think in the interim, the, the politics are such that this law will remain in place. Um, I think Planned Parenthood and other groups will have to figure out what they're going to do because I don't see this law being stopped by the courts. Yeah, and that, and, that, and that, Bob, then would bring it back to an election issue. Uh, we hear yeah. so much from the White House term in, on this right now. Is this where they're trying uh, to pivot? Do they see this as an opening for the next couple of months to change the conversation? Well, Leland, as you know, they would love to change the conversation from Afghanistan, which has really been a disaster for the White House. Um, at, at the same time, uh, they're heading into a, a tough stretch uh, where they've got to pass this infrastructure bill. Get, there's already infighting with Democrats and progressives. The party is is fighting with one another. Uh, I do think that it, it helps Democrats because uh, in some ways it's going to fire up both bases. But Democrats will be able to say uh, if we got to keep the Senate because Mitch McConnell has said uh, he's not going to basically act on on any Biden nominee uh, if uh, Republicans take back the Senate. So obviously that would be a Supreme Court uh, nomination. We've seen McConnell do that before. Uh, so that, that's going to fire up the left uh, to come out uh, in the election and hold the Senate. Uh, and, and certainly Republicans are, are going to be uh, trying to fire up their base because this, this is obviously such a core issue for, for both parties, which obviously they disagree mightily on. As we could tell by the discussion uh, just now, I want to thank you all. To your point, Bob, uh, AOC's already said Democrats can either abolish the filibuster and expand the court or do nothing. So uh, battle lines drawn with the progressives. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great to join you. All right. The pandemic, as we move on, is creating a country that's divided based on vaccination status.